Hello, 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 and welcome back to Conversations with JR. I have something that I would like to read to you today. It is about my experience, well, it's connected to an experience that I had this week with a brother, and um, I was riding on the train, and um, I was taught from my brother's dad, when a man speaks to you or wants your attention, at least be respectful enough to give him at least five minutes of your time, say hi, give a smile, then you can move on. I did that this week while riding on a train, going to work, brother got my attention, my ears was plugged up, I was reading a book, I, I ride tr public transportation to work. And I normally get a seat, and my thing is to listen to a motivational tape or some gospel music or meditation music. I have my coffee, and I read. I enjoy reading on the train. I get a lot of reading done on the train. But I unplugged my ears, and I gave him five minutes of my time. And after a period of time, I told him that I wish he had a good day at work. And that, um, it, it, you know, it's still summer. I'm in New York. It's still summer. This is August. And I was saying to him that, you know, if you get a lunch break, go outside if you can on your lunch break and enjoy the weather. These are the last days of summer. Enjoy the weather. So I proceeded to plug up my ears and, and uh, go back to reading my book. I don't know what I did to set this young man off, this gentleman off, this brother off. Um, he proceeded to jump up. And he proceeded to say a lot of things that I don't think that I could legally repeat here on YouTube, but he blamed the problems of the world on sisters, and that we are stuck up, we are angry, we like brushing brothers off, we don't have time for them, you know, and I was a little bit confused, I was a little bit embarrassed about his behavior, because I just really didn't understand what it was that I had did wrong. So needless to say, when the train came to a stop, it wasn't my stop. I just got off the stop. I ran out of the train. I got off the stop and I waited for the next train. Because in these days and times, you don't know about people's behavior. But I was really bothered by this behavior. And, you know, sometimes we have a tendency of blaming ourselves for someone else's behavior and someone else's reaction. And I just needed to know what it was that I did wrong. Um, I talked to some of my students because I was on my way to teach and I have older students that I teach and I, you know, talk to some of my students because, you know, knowledge is power. Wherever you can get your knowledge from, you know, a lot of these young people these days, I have college freshmen and a lot of young people these days, you know, they have something to say. And basically, the males of the class said that this man, this young man, thought that I, you know, I dissed him. You know, I, I disrespected him. And then I heard from the young ladies of the class, when they were saying how, how this always happens to them. And my thought about this is, why is it that women, especially sisters, but women in general, why is it that we are expected to give our time to men? But when men don't want to give their time to us... They can brush us off any way that they like without any consideration. So I blogged about this. I blogged about this. I put it on my YouTube page. I mean, I'm sorry. I put it on my Facebook page. I, I, it's called Drag the Pen. I put it on my WordPress uh, page. But I thought that I would like to read this to you. Because I, re I, I really like to hear some feedback, some real feedback from both sides, men and women. So it's called Fed Up. Black men are accusing black women of being angry, having bad attitudes, and difficult to be in relationships. So here is the voice of one woman speaking out. It is not only black women who seem to be angry and have bad attitudes. It's women in general. Women are kicking back against years of mistreatment and degradation and the forceful eyes of the male graves. Black men are oblivious to the shift of women collectively, pushing back from accepting the status quo of how women are supposed to be submissive to her man. 
Yeah, well, maybe that submissive act worked back in caveman days. We are living in an advanced society and in a modern society. And so women are no longer have to sit down and shut up. Women have risen from the days of suffrage and have transformed themselves into self-sufficient, educated, capable women who have disconnected themselves from the ideology that women are supposed to just be barefoot and pregnant. Women have overcome the standard norm of just how somebody being somebody's wife, housekeeper, and sexual object. Women have overcome the standards and no longer choose to abide in homes where their opinions and voices are not respected. They're not respected in these homes because men is the sole uh, or financial supporter of these homes and they are praised for their efforts. While women are told that running after children, washing tons of laundry, overseeing homework and other school projects, serving on, serving on PTA, cooking, cleaning, organizing carpool, braiding hair, food shopping, and balancing a tight household budget, it's not equal to a man bringing home a paycheck. Black women are done with being held back, held down, controlled, abused, manipulated, underpaid, and underappreciated. So, if black men perceive black women to be angry, maybe it's because black men have for years gotten away with running game on them and passing black women around like they're renter chicks, passing us over for white women, and dropping seeds and not staying around for the financial and the physical and the emotional support of raising your children. Instead, Black men want to spend the bulk of their lives being a player, pusher, and pimp daddy, drifting from one ignorant sister to the next because some black women have not yet found their self-worth. Most black men are afraid of black women who are strong, focused, critical thinkers, financially secure, and emotionally stable. Sisters have risen above the slick talk and promises of a better day. We are no longer falling prey to black man's idea of let's just see where this takes us. Black women have become wise to the game of giving brothers the best years of their lives. Black women are not angry. They are fed up. Fed up with irresponsibly, emotionally unstable, financially lacking, unfocused, and non-committing black men. So, we are no longer sitting and waiting for a black prince charming who may never arrive. Black women are buying homes, cars, raising children, earning college degree, and pulling in six-figure salaries. So... To all the black men in the world who accuse women of being angry and hard to get along with, I say, where I stand, anger looks good on me. This is just the voice of one woman. I'm not saying that I speak for the masses. What I am saying to you is this. These are things that I hear people talk about. These are the topics that I hear women and men talking about. I am going to put it out there. These are the things that are negatively impacting our relationships with one another. And until we sit down and have good conversations with one another and come to a common understanding, we will forever be emotionally broken, we will forever be angry, and we will forever treat one another how that brother treated me. So this is Conversations with JR. Um, I hope that you're having wonderful conversations. And um, keep listening because I have a lot to say.